Dan and Jan sitting there. Jello Wick right here. Dan's going to come and share a little bit about the work in Zambia. Thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Amen. Yes, my wonderful wife, Janice, go ahead and just stand up so everyone can see you. I know. <laughs> um, uh, God has just been really, truly, he's always good. That is his nature. But he has really been blessing the ministry in uh, Chapada, Zambia. Uh, we've been there almost 10 years now. Um, hard to believe. I was sharing in the Sunday school how Brownie had helped me uh, first give my testimony of my salvation. And uh, God's done a, a lot of work. Uh, through those years, but uh, we started with uh, one church, and the Lord has just been multiplying uh, through the discipleship, and uh, there are about 15 churches right now that are, are meeting. Um, many of them don't have pastors yet. Leaders from one church are going to another and, and just uh, throughout the day uh, preaching and then leading Bible studies, so uh, we want to say thank you. Um, these are extensions from First Bible here, um, and uh, of course we're from First Bible Baptist in Rochester, New York, uh, George Grace, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him, um, and uh, I understand Kevin will be possibly traveling out here, all right, praise the Lord. Um, so we appreciate your prayers, your, your sacrifice, you know, uh, we know it's, it's not easy, but you're really making a huge investment in the kingdom of God and for eternity for these people. Uh, we, while we struggle here and we see our economy changing, um, and you think how difficult it's getting, realize you have a full house over your head with windows that close. These people live in grass huts or brick houses, partial roofs, don't have water, don't have electric, don't have food. Uh, right now is a very difficult, uh, difficult time for them. Their, their food stores of maize has run out, and they survive. They eat the green mangoes off the trees. Now the green mangoes are finished. They're waiting for something else to come up that they can eat. Many of them have one meal a day. Some of them don't have a meal for several days. Um, but they continue to be faithful. They praise the Lord, and uh, we appreciate your prayers and what God is doing and your sacrifice, not only for us, but for all the missionaries that you guys support. We just praise the Lord, and thank you so much. I had the privilege and honor of uh, hanging out at the Jellowick house, and uh, they were both making millions and millions of dollars, making people's eyesight well, and now they uh, are making the same amount of money in eternity, making people's eyesight spiritually well, and I thank the Lord for our friendship over many years. Cheryl and I have known them for so many years. It's been since the, uh, since 1990. 8990 when we met and through the legendary Mike and Louise Metzger. And uh, they still talk to both of us. Well, talk to you more. They don't want to talk to me. But, but uh, it's wonderful to have the connections in the Spirit of God, the body of Christ. Go to Colossians chapter number 3. We'll have a short message in the Word and then a short message in your uh, handout here. So I want to make sure you have one of these before I get into this. Uh, any of you do not have one of our handouts with the calendar for the year, please raise your hand. And uh, wow, excellent. Let's make these guys work. Go, ushers, go. Go, 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 go. There we go. go. Keep on going. Look at that, Jeff. Man, you've been working out, haven't you? Yeah, that's how I hurt my leg. I, I was working out. Yeah, right. Nobody believes that. There's some over back there. William, there you go. That's it. Everybody else said? Anybody else? Raise your hand. We good? Beautiful. You'll need this in a little while. Colossians chapter number 3, we're going to be there for a little bit talking about. No, don't get too far. No, not yet, not yet. Boy, you're, gosh, you've been working out too. You're fat. Don't give away all the hints. But talking about our Acts 2 project, as I have put before you in the vision of the Lord, 
off of the mission of being an Acts 1-8 church. And looking at that, we're going to pull everything together at the end with that. But I like to make sure and get everything out in front of you at the beginning of the year. I intended to be doing that last Sunday, but uh, we had a, uh, a pinch hitter in the name of Bobby, and he did a good job. And uh, um, the reports of my dem- demise by his accounting were that I fell down the stairs, that I was, you know, I don't know what, yeah, anyway. When Bobby tells a story, there's no one better, is there? <laughs> he can stel- tell the same accounting in ten different ways and get everybody still. Your, your mom's still laughing at him over all these years. And then she's like this, oh my goodness. I hurt my Achilles. I've had problems with my feet over many, many years. And, uh, but I hurt my Achilles a few days before uh, Christmas. But Christmas Eve, I was able to preach and and uh, be with all of you, and then Sunday morning woke up, and oops, uh, the Achilles blew up, the ankle blew up, and lots of ice, and, and uh, um, you can get the truth from Cheryl, but I think I was kind of nice for a little while. Uh, you know me, I never get grumpy. But uh, anyway, but I am better. So many of you pray for so many people and for you to pray for me. Thank you. I am so very thankful. There's people that have gone through heart issues, losses and family members and uh, going through things right now. I think of you and your wife. And, and so thank you all for praying for everything, supplications. You pray for people, and I'm so thankful for that. And uh, that really binds the body of Christ, the church, in such a way. I'm talking about just, you know, not God get me to work prayer, but I'm thankful for your prayers and how I know that so many of you pray with intercession unto the Lord and you intercede on the behalf of others. So thank you for that. And uh, again, thank you uh, in this light, and I want to make sure that I mention this, Dan, for being here. Dan and Janice, thank you for taking the time to be here. I know you'll be here for a little bit. Old Brian Hedges uh, reached out. He actually sent an email out a few weeks ago and asked if we wanted to, you know, we interested in meeting you. And I thought, yeah, that would be great to meet Dan. I've never met him before. (laughs) But uh, that was really good. He sent up, you know. But uh, but, uh, missionaries are important to this church, correct? Yes? Amen. And the mission work of God that we're called to. And so... Our Acts 1A conference has this nice brochure. It's still out there. We still have copies. I made sure there was extra copies. Why am I pointing out now? That was back in October because on the inside flap are the missionaries that we support. So you can grab one of these and pray for them by name. And go down there and go, wait a minute, we better get the jello mix on here. You're not on here. Just kidding. You see, (laughs) but here's the point. As we start off the new year, and I'm going to end in this place, um, talking about prayer and uh, not talking about the subject of prayer, but just in an ending, we always end in a time of invitation, a time of prayer. Will I start praying today? And will I start praying every day for the Acts 2 project, for what God is desiring to do through you and through this church in the body of Christ Again, when we had our Acts 1A conference back in October, Pastor George Grace, of course, preached through many messages, uh, the Shunammite woman, and of course, the whole story back there in the Song of Solomon. What a tremendous series of messages, most of all from the heart of a man who understands the love of Christ and that in Christ alone is how we want to operate this year and from the years on. And as we add things a little by little, tiny bits and pieces, here we are back to a place of Scripture. As you know, uh, Colossians is one of my favorite, if, if not the, the number one of one of books of the Bible that I love so very much because it uh, extols the name of Jesus. It extols the, the preeminence of Jesus Christ and his headship of the body. And so we are in uh, Colossians chapter number three. I'm just going to do a short little uh, few minutes of just really getting us into uh, the heart behind the Acts 2 project this year and how that mission, vision, direction, and passion will continue to go. 
and I'm going to move right through. I'll look at the calendar. I'll talk about things on Sundays. I'll highlight some things, and we will be out of here on time. I think usually our second service ends at 1230, so I should have you out around then. We have a lot of ground to cover. But when you think about all that's come before you, and I mentioned a little bit about this when I spoke of Sermon of Sermons after the Acts 1A conference, we did land in our submission to Christ as just a little bit of a highlight uh, back in October. And so I just want to hit this a little bit. You know, this will be the third time I mention it. Now, I won't specifically hit on this, but I will talk of in Christ alone during this year. It is the how that we're going to accomplish what we are setting out to do. And it's good to know how we're going to do it. And this message is a simple one, just a few minutes, again, leading into our calendar and our highlights and everything. But our submission to Christ is very important. I want to read with you the first four verses of Colossians 3 and just, again, hit some highlights of some things that have been mentioned in the past. But again, just like the Word of God, when it repeats something or says it again or brings it back up again, you go, I wonder if that's important. It probably is. And this is very important to your pastor, to our church, and to all of you. Verse number one, chapter number three. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse two, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. I mention this often. It's one of the very first verses I ever me uh, memorized as a young believer to take my mind and my eyes off of man as much and have my eyes on things in glory. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Our submission to Christ. I wrote in our pamphlet here in the Acts 1A conference, this year's Acts 1A conference brings a strong, contemplative, and convicting question for us as one body and one spirit. How are we going to continue accomplishing the mission of our church? Well, I come here to this place again to reiterate, to reemphasize, to intentionally speak about in Christ alone as our Acts 2 project ought to be in the how. How do we do it? Why do we need to put our thoughts and seek things above? Why in the world should we seek above? Because we'll find all we need. We'll find everything we need right there to be better. Remember I preached a series last year and then George mentioned this thought. It was kind of neat uh, that the Spirit of God brought it back for us to be better in Christ. A lot of people want to, but how many of you are going to go about it to be better? It does have, in this whole thinking, the answers if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If I seek the things above, if I seek the things of Christ where he sits at the right hand of the Father, then I will find how to be better, and how to be better in Christ alone, which then will allow me to fulfill what God would have me to do in my little piece. Each one of you has a little piece, a little part. Some have a little bit bigger, some have a little less, but each one of you have a part in fulfilling what God has called our church to do in calendar year 2023, as in 2022, as in 2021, everybody. Some of you have gone through maladies. Some of you have gone through health issues. Some of you have gone through spiritual battles. You're on the other side of them or you're getting through the, on the other side or you're walking through stuff and God's giving you victory and you're saying, it really has come back to me doing this in Christ alone. How have I been able to get through? In Christ, in Christ, in Christ. I have found a new love for the Lord Jesus Christ. I have found some things about the Lord that I knew to be true in doctrine and in word, maybe like my message I spoke about in questions on Christmas Eve, maybe Jesus is just a name, a title, and a characteristic to you. Instead of being a deep love relationship in you. You see, why should we seek above? Because very simply in these four verses, there's some simple things to see. You're risen with Christ. You're dead with Christ. You're hid with Christ. We are risen with Christ. We are dead in Christ. We are hid with Christ. Christ is our life. We're alive and he is our life. We appear with him in glory one day. In those simple four verses, 
you have five really good quick tips on how to make each day in Christ alone. If you're not in Christ and you don't have salvation in Christ, and this might sound pretty good, but it might be that it's just like maybe a nice pep talk. Well, I, I guess well, dead, dead in Christ? What does that mean, you're dead? Yeah, the person of you is dead, meaning the flesh is dead in Christ but you are alive spiritually in Jesus Christ when you call on the name of the Lord to save you. You cannot save yourself. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, that's what you become as a new creature who says, okay, I'm risen with Christ. You're alive. And not spiritually dead. Christ, who is our life. Oh, when you've got some things in order and in line, ooh, you think, think of things that above and things, set my affection on things above, seek you first the kingdom of God. Look at that thinking process and get this aligned. And now I line up my heart, my soul, my spirit. See, Scripture does tell us a few things that are, again, these are great tips. But they're more than tips because for the believer, they're an essence of life. They're being alive in Christ alone. And then it goes into a few verses, and I'll give the other side of this. See, Colossians 3, 5 through 13 tells us to put off the old man, that old lost man that's now dead, and put on the new man which is now alive. But that old man used to be alive and the spirit side was dead. But you became a new creature in Christ when you called on the name of the Lord to save you. It's for by grace that you're saved through faith, not of yourself as a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So we know now by his grace he saved you. You put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, okay, you're a new man. Put on the new man, clean things up, because he is worth it. Verses 5 through 13, I'll just hit them in highlights. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And what a list of filth and dirt. Mortify this stuff, this flesh. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is adultery, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That's some bad stuff. He's saying, take that cloak and put it off. When you got saved, that old cloak of sin does not have to be the one that you put on when you leave the house. You can put the new cloak on. The new cloak has the blood of Jesus Christ in it. It makes you alive. It makes you think different. It tells you that he is worth living. And so you have this new life, this clean thinking. You don't lie to one another. It says in verse number 9, you don't have wrath and anger and malice and blasphemy. Verse number 8. People are looking for the new man in Christ. Verse number 10. I put on the new man. I'm renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. There's no longer Greek and Jew and Scythian and barbarian. We are in Christ all in all. And so now when we're in him, church, people come around us and go, you're a bunch of weirdos. And some of you are weird just because of your personality. I'm just sorry. I mean, I'm pretty normal, wouldn't you say? Anyway, that's a generalization. What people want to see is something new. They're tired of the old flesh and the believer. They're tired of the carnal believer that says, they're, hey, I'm not perfect and I'm having a bad day. How about you tell them, Jesus has made me new and I just didn't put on the right cloak today. But I'd ask you to please forgive me. I don't have words of anger and malice toward you. In fact, as it says there, I forgive you and I forbear you. And I want you to know I'm so sorry for acting like this toward you. A lost person hears you say that, their jaw might fall on the floor. But that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you. They don't know they're looking for you, but they're looking for you in Christ. They're looking for that new person. They come, people come to a church service Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Now I'm white as snow. What does that mean? 
to someone who's lost. We're going to have to put off the old lost person and put on the new person. How does that happen? By just checking a box and clicking on something and some bullet points? No, it's I got to commune with him. I got to spend time with him. I got to sing with him. I got to pray with him. I got to talk to him. I got to read from him. I need to hear from him. I need him to speak to me. I need him and his words just to have some quiet and some peace so that I can hear him through the noise. And then I know that I have this new life in Christ. And people are saying, you know, I like what you got. How did you get it? I didn't buy it at a store. He paid the price and bought everything for me on the cross. And I am totally and completely redeemed. My sins have been washed away by his blood. He was raised from the dead on the third day. And when I called on the name of the Lord, I cannot tell you and explain to you, but I knew, and I'm different, and I'm changed, and I, I just can't figure it out. But I thank you, God, for saving my soul. That's the new person. That's the new life in Christ. you got a brand new year. You're only eight days in. Come on. Live that way. Little by little, little by little, little by little. Favor the things of Jesus Christ in Christ alone. Because it goes down to verse number 14, and this is where I'll finish up. And there's that neat illustration that George used, and I'm just going to just kind of highlight it really fast and get into our calendar and our handout. It says in verse number 14, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. What a great illustration he used that day. When he talked about how faith, hope, and charity, these are the three. That's it. When it's over with, that's it. Faith, hope, and charity. 1 Corinthians 13. But the greatest of these is charity. Love never fails. Charity is who we are right now. Remember, use the illustration of faith. Faith is from my past. Faith is being walking with Jesus Christ, been, been saved since 1983. It'll be 40 years he has proven himself time and time and time again. He is faithful, so I give him my trust, and he has proven to me every time that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Every single time he's increased my faith. On the other side, there's hope. Over here, there's this incredible thing out of verse number four that says that one day I'll be with him in glory. By the word of God, by his promises that he says he's going to keep, the hope is my future that I can't wait to see Jesus Christ. I know you want to see your dad again. This is six years that your dad, six years today. But I know you want to see Jesus more than anything. That old song. Where's Jesus? That's our hope and glory. Faith is awesome, hope is awesome, but charity, as George said, it was beautiful when he said, charity is who you are, who I am, who we are today. Who are you right now? If someone was around you, would they experience the kindness and humbleness and bowels of mercy in verse number 12? Would they get the long-suffering, the forbearing of one another, the forgiving of one another? If many have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you. I love, I love this line that George has used so many times in my life. Which comes from Jesus, of course. Loving the people that are lovable is easy. That doesn't show anybody anything other than you just love like they would love. But loving the people that don't love you, loving the people that are unlovable, even loving who you are in Christ when you don't even like your own behavior, and you look in the mirror of the Word of God and you forget what manner of man you are, just remember, the love of Christ constrains, and the love of Christ has saved your soul, and the love of the Father that sent his Son for you, not to condemn you, but that the world through him might be saved, that that's the kind of charity that people are looking for, that people can live and work through and walk through so that you can point them to Jesus Christ. You see, our Acts 2 project in Christ alone has a chance of being successful 
year after year after year if it is in Christ alone. It is something of our mission and our vision and our direction and our passion. It is that we live faith, love others, and declare hope as we put that purpose behind our statement of who we are as a church. Remembering Without ceasing, it says in 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and the Father. We live faith, we love others, and we declare hope. There's your handout right in the front. Here it is, right here. It's clear in Christ alone that's what we're going to do. Just like it was on last year's when we had our 25th anniversary handout, but there it was. Live faith, love others, declare hope. So when you pick this up and you look at it, you say, okay, I can see that. I can see us doing that. I can see us functioning that way. We need to do more of that so that people will be attracted to Jesus Christ in us. Look on the back of this, okay? Grab the, the handout and have the back real quick. Now I'm going to walk through this quickly. I'm going to hit some highlights. I'm going to stop at a couple places that maybe that uh, are fresh and new or different. That'll be on the inside. But let me just let me just kind of hit some highlights about Sundays. Now, a lot of you have been around here a number of years, but sometimes you don't realize all the things that are going on on Sunday mornings. And so, when you look at the calendar there, it's Sunday morning service. First service, 9 a.m., Nice, beautiful little orange up there. You say, okay, what's going on on Sunday mornings? Well, 9 a.m., we have a worship service. We always have service in here. Of course, at 1030, we'll show that in a minute. But the investors get together. The young families get together in the fellowship hall. They put up the divider. Today, it was open. We had special guest stars, or just guests. They're shining. They that shine shall shine with the brightness of the front. Do we, we have to memorize that verse? A long time ago, too? Anyway. I'm tracking a little bit of navigators for you right there. Come on, Dan, do your homework. But here you are right now sitting here at 1030. What's going on at 9? Some of you just come to 1030, so you don't know that 9 a.m. There's a group called Young Families, 20s and 30s, have a, a single family, the nuclear family, a different mix in family. It could be people that are hoping to have family, husband and wives in there, whatever, people engaged, just going to this class setting. In that group right there, meeting at 9, the 20s and 30s, they're, they're going through assorted topics, but they're really building relationship and communion in the Lord with one another. We've been doing this since the first of last year, and it's growing, and it has a lot of depth to it. Please take advantage of the opportunity to go there. And if you said, hey, in a young family, could I get some help? Could I get somebody to be praying for me, somebody to be alongside of me while I'm raising my family? That might be a good place to hit on a Sunday morning. The investors, the investors have been gathering together since the fall of 2010 when we finished building the... Uh, Faith Place building in the Fellowship Hall, and it's led by Doc Clement, and of course with uh, Bobby and Steve. They're also part of the leadership part of it, but there's always some teaching lessons. There's some music and song, and there's also, of course, time of prayer, uh, testimonies, prayer requests, and it's really a strong group of people over the course of these 12 years that have built just really a love relationship in Christ. Hey, I'd love to be part of that. If you're in that neighborhood of age or closer, whatever, wherever you're at, you're more than welcome there to be part of that. What else is going on? Of course, discipleship hour at the bottom there is going on in the cafe at 9 a.m. Let me highlight that for you. As you got this handout, right, open it up and look on the right side flap. It says there, about Sunday groups, young families, discipleship hour, investors class, ministry hour. I'll cover that in a minute. It says there under discipleship hour, I will just simply read it. It says there, they meet in the cafe and they focus on training mature believers with each who teach each other how to grow in their faith as followers of Christ. What a great opportunity for you. You've been saved for a little while, you're seasoned in the word, and, and you're a little more mature, and you say, hey, I'd love to teach others, or be taught by others, or get involved a little deeper in the word of God. Well, why don't you jump in there? Pastor Brian is leading that. He has been leading it since he came on staff in April of 2021, 
And we have been offering that as an opportunity, sometimes with just disciple makers, sometimes with people that different studies of prayer and discipleship and what it means, going through the big picture uh, Old Testament, big picture New Testament, all kinds of stuff. But this year, we want to expand the invitation and say, look, if you want to be part of this, and again, they're going to study the Bible at a pretty high level, but in a good way, then go be part of it. They're going to be starting next Sunday a new series called Seven Realities of Experiencing God. And that'll be an eight-week study. And what they're going to be doing is letting you, if you're already in there, continue to grow and mature in your faith. And maybe there'll be a place where maybe you're discipling somebody or not. But maybe you just want to grow in your faith and you've ever been to something like that. Hey, I'd like to, I'd like to be part of that. Well, then contact Brian. Just show up next Sunday at 9 a.m. Show up the following Sunday at 9 a.m. They'll be there in the cafe. Okay? You need to know that that's an opportunity for you to grow. Faith Play Sunday School, I will not shortchange that at all, but we talk about and highlight our children's ministry all the time. They have a Sunday school hour from 9 to 10, 15. On the north side and on the south side, the kids are being taught the Bible Every single Sunday. Is that awesome or what? Bring your kids to the church, would you please? Bring them to Sunday school. Bring your grandchildren. Get them in church. They should be in church. Don't drop them off and walk away. You come on in to church services too. But your children need to know that hearing about God from someplace other than their home would be awesome. Or it will inspire you that they will hear about God in your house. And talk about the lessons that they're learning in Faith Place every Sunday morning. What about 10.30? It says at 10.30 in the morning there's a lot of stuff going on as well. Well, in the auditorium, of course, we're here again. We're always going to be here. Rain or shine. Unless we have a little slick parking lot, then it might get tough. Okay? But the primed youth group takes over the fellowship hall. Right now they're in there, the junior high on one side, the high school on another. Maybe they're unified. I don't know if they put the divider back up. But... They are in there at 10.30 every single Sunday. You look up there and it says ministry hour. Let me grab you your attention right now. 10.30. If you look again in the inside flap, there's something that says ministry hour. It meets in the cafe and it focuses on the importance of equipping people to reach our community with regional missions and sports ministry. Getting involved in all kinds of ministries. That's just those particular two. What is the thought behind this? We want to expand the invitation to you that you don't have to be in a certain age demographic. We used to be just 40s and 50s and a few others. It's an opportunity for you if you love ministry, you love serving the Lord, or you said, boy, I got some questions about getting involved in ministry stuff. Well, they're going to restart and reinvigorate their 1030 gathering with Rick Adams and a few of the other leaders. Say, okay, in fact, they're going to start a series next Sunday out of the Gospel of Mark and look at Jesus Christ as the servant of man, which is the highlight of the Gospel of Mark. They maybe study the life of Christ. I heard he was pretty good at ministry. The life of Paul a little bit, maybe some others. And my point in that is this. They will be highlighting ministry all the time, testimonies, accountings, how you can get involved in ministry. It won't be the only place. It'll be getting deeper into the idea that, hey, I should have a heart for other people and serve them and minister to them. Again, another opportunity for you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. So the cafe at 9 a.m. is discipleship hour. At 10.30, it's ministry hour. Don't forget, too, Faith Place Church. So the second hour is a church setting. So if the kids stay there for a couple of sessions, it's awesome. 9 o'clock and 10.30, they're going to learn the Bible. They're going to learn about Jesus Christ. They're going to learn about the love of Christ through, of course, the teaching of the Word of God, but the fellowship, the interaction, the workers that are in there on both sides of the building. But in Faith Place Church, they have really a little church service for the K through 5th grade your children will absolutely love it. And Pam Snow's teaching of the Word of God is second to none. And she is a minister of the gospel in such a beautiful way. We are, we are blessed. We have an incredible children's ministry uh, director. We have an incredible youth pastor. And gosh, they just you, you, you need to take the opportunity to take advantage of such things 
it's right there for you. Let me just go through the next few things really quick. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Tuesday evening, the refined bunch gets together. That's our young singles ministry. They're out in the coffee house at 6.30. On Wednesday night in the coffee house, there is a Bible study for the investors. The investors also have small groups, and they get together once a month on Sundays. In different two different kinds of groups, but they also have a Bible study. It's sponsored by them, and Pastor Bobby is usually teaching it, or, uh, or Pastor Steve. But also, you are welcome to come to it as well if you'd like to go to Bible study. It's out in the coffee house. The prime youth group is using the fellowship hall, or they're outside when the weather is nice. And don't forget Bible Institute. We're already, always teaching a course on Wednesday nights. Uh, just a, a simple little plug to be reminded. Our institute starts in three or four weeks, and, uh, and it'll be on our calendar here in a minute. And of course, First and Second Samuel will be taught on Wednesday night. On Tuesday nights, Pastor George Grace on video will be teaching Hebrews and James. On Monday nights, Pastor Brian's going to be teaching the Gospel of John. And we're also going to have a video class, the Acts of the Apostles. So you have an opportunity. Those registration sign-ups things will go out today. They'll be live for, uh, for you on our site, so you'll be able to uh, sign up for that. And then, of course, Saturday morning, we have our men's ministry, and we have men's prayer. We have uh, slowed that down for three or four weeks. we got our men's conference coming up. I'm going to be doing a, a men's study in a few, uh, for a few weeks here as well, and we'll restart that up after our men's conference at the end of February. What we are putting before you what I am showing you through this calendar is always back to, hey, what do we do on Sundays, but what do we do also during the week? We just had Thank You Sunday. We just had Appreciation uh, Sunday, of uh, Ministry Appreciation. It all goes back to missions, family, and sports. We desire to set everything through what God has put together for us. It's either about missions, it's either about family, it's either about sports. I have little dots next to each thing because each dot represents the red, the black, and the blue. Each represent something. Red represents missions and uh, the charity golf tournament, different regional missions, international missions. The, the black represents our church family and our family stuff. And the blue represents ADP sports. So again... That's just something I do just to say, okay, are we in a place where we are reaching out properly but also doing the things that are involved in in-reach when we get together in our fellowship and our ministry time? Okay, here you go. In five minutes, I'm going to walk through the calendar. You ready? Here we go. You got your calendar in front of you, but it's going to be up on the screen. January, very simple. A missions trip interest meeting. I'm looking right at you, Larry. Here you go. Next Sunday at noon. So, are you interested in a mission trip or you don't know what a mission trip entails? Pastor Randy Adams will be in the cafe at noon and he's going to talk about the two international missions trips that we're taking this year. Okay? Anybody interested at all? Interested? Come on, put your hand up. Put your hand up. Come on. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. If you're not interested, show up anyway. <laughs> because then you might become interested when you hear the heart of missions from another person, our missions pastor, okay? Resource, health, baby bottle, drive. This year, a lot of times we do special big things. This year, just very simple. We're going to have a baby bottle drive and be involved in that for a couple of weeks. It'll be in, out in the lobby. That kicks off next Sunday. Our Bible Institute, as I said, starts the last part of January. And, of course, it's in your calendar. February. What's February look like? Well... It's going to be a little snowy, a little rainy, but we'll kick off ADP Sports with our Ministering Hearts Breakfast. We do it every year. Are you thinking about serving or you just want to come and have a really good breakfast? We have, oh, we have every kind of awesome breakfast food in the world, okay? Cantaloupe, pineapple, strawberries, wait a minute, wait a minute, eggs, bacon, but we'll have a sweet time kicking off the year of ADP Sports. Please come, be part of that. You'll see an email go out soon to be able to click and say, hey, I want to be part of that. I'll be there for that breakfast so we have a count. 
Speaking of emails, if you want to be on the email list and you don't think you are on it, go to our website. I know that it, of course, needs a little bit of work, but there's a couple things on it. On the front page of our website, at the bottom, it says, subscribe me to email. That is my email. That's no one else's. That is the pastor's emails. You, some of you say I don't get them. You can get it by clicking on that, putting your email address in, boom, and it will be added to the platform, okay? If you have had done that in the past and you're not getting them, I heard that you can check a few different areas on your email. Check your spam, your junk, all that kind of stuff. If you have Gmail, check the legendary promotions folder. That's where they all are. Okay? Just so that you know that I send something out every two weeks. Usually, sometimes I'll send something out back-to-back -back weeks. So, if you're not getting communications, please make sure you sign up for those emails. Volleyball starts in a few weeks. We're just getting our, our contract all set and everything set up. The sign-ups will be set up, and you'll be able to see that. It will be opened up this week for sign-ups. Of course, it says up there our men's conference is at the last weekend of February as we go off into March. March has our dinner theater. We've had that for a few years, two or three years. It's a great time of ministry and servanthood. Our youth ministry ends up taking over all of the serving of tables. They've done a tremendous job over the last couple of years, and we love it. And you have a chance to give them some tips and, and some opportunities for them to have a donation, basically a donation for, for just doing that. And they end up, of course, being the beneficiaries of that. So you can donate to that in order for them to, be, uh, to help with their summer camp. Of course, our women's conference is exactly one month from the men's conference. You go out into April and you've got Resurrection Sunday and our uh, Sunday celebration, of course, for Easter. Happy Five Soccer then starts on the 15th of April. Get your taxes in. Well, that's a Saturday, so you've got plenty of extra time. Don't worry. Eh, don't worry about the taxes. Don't worry about them. It's all right. I heard the IRS is going to close. Just kidding. Family conference, something brand new, May of 2023. Pastor Kevin is coming. Uh, he is going to be preaching and speaking for three days, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. Let me just give you a quick, a quick uh, overview of it, and I will be speaking more of it. Friday night will be about relationships in the Lord, dating, premarital. What is it like to have a relationship with someone in the Lord Jesus Christ. Saturday night will be for married couples only. It will be for married people, and it will be in the fellowship hall. There will be a dinner on that Saturday evening. He will be speaking to marriages, how to have a healthy marriage that can be better in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Sunday morning, our family conference will be centered up on children. He'll be speaking about how to raise children properly in this day and age. It hasn't changed how we're supposed to raise children. There's just different things that are in play that make it either more difficult or in some areas that make it a little bit easier. But raising children in today's culture, he'll be speaking. So relationships, marriages, children, those three different uh, messages will be highlighted those are the three things that will be highlighted in that weekend also too his wife is going to be coming with him as well kevin is a friend of our church he is hasn't spoken here in a few years but looking forward to having him here the senior recognition i always put that in the calendar it's when we do graduates of course and seniors we recognize them from the youth group and then june hits and softball starts, our VBSC, our sports camp, the first week, full first full week of June. Make sure you sign up to be part of that when you see sign-ups for that. Mighty Mites starts up in June as well. So you've got Happy Five, then you've got Mighty Mites and ADP Sports. You've got the adults with men's softball, our baby dedications on Father's Day in June, and then Mexico City. Of course, GNIA is good news in action, tied together with that. Uh, uh, ministry organization. We have been tied together with them for a lot of years. Going to go see uh, Mario. Say it right, not Mario. Mario. We're going to go see Mario, and we're going to have some time there and doing a little camp, a little sports camp in Mexico City. Of course, we hit July. Church at ADP Sports Park. What does that mean? We're going to have church at the sports park. It's a 
Uh, last year that we had, of course, our celebration, we ended up doing it, our 25th anniversary in May, in the parking lot. We're going to have church at the sports park, and then we're going to have lunch afterwards and cook up all the meats that we need to have. You can bring all your extra sides and stuff and have a little picnic with your small group, with other people, and uh, looking forward to that, doing something very special for the family of God. Of course, our summer camp comes, primed high school and summer camp, uh, I mean primed uh, junior high and high school, the 5th through the 9th, so you know the dates ahead of time. They have winter camp actually coming up in a few weeks as well. And then our other, our second mission trip in Honduras, going to go see Jose again over in Honduras. He has, of course, been here and visited here, a missionary that we love and have great relationship already. August brings our co-ed softball starting and our charity golf tournament. We have partnered with uh, Sleep in Heavenly Peace for three years. We're going to go off and do something a little bit different, partner with another, uh, another organization to raise money for them. I'll let you know quite a bit about that over the next few months. I'll just hold on to her for a while. 2013 was our first year we did a a, a charity golf tournament where we did all of that to bring the gospel to people in our community and of course raise funds to give that away. It's a mission work. We don't take anything in for us. We do it for others. September, October, November, December. September brings ADP Sports, Pee Wee Football for Kids. Our Bible Institute fall semester starts in September. October brings our Acts 1A conference. And our missions conference, of course, every year is our championship season. We look forward to that in such a special way. We are bringing back Trunk or Tree. Happy? Yay? I got a round of applause in first service. No, I'm just, I'm just. This is, I've always uh, hoped that we could do something at the end of the year that would be really a big outreach. And we've seen that, you know, September, October has become as busy two months as any what I'm looking to do is bring back Trunk or Treat in a way that really blesses the family of God. And, of course, visitors and people are welcome, of course, and passing out gospel tracts and doing it all. And this location is, is a beautiful place. And we'll couple it with ADP Sports and what we do for outreach, and, and we'll see how it goes. But, you know, we've attempted to do more with it uh, in terms of outreach, and it's hard to do that. But we're going to go after Trunk or Treat. Uh, a little bit of throwback and looking forward to seeing how that goes. November and December, of course, our Ministry Appreciation Sunday and our Thank You Sunday in November. We give thanks to the Lord for what He has done. December is our Christmas production. So then you have your disclaimer at the bottom there. I have covered a lot and you have been great. And I am not going to keep you any longer um, what I'm going to do is just show you something real quick in a quick way. This would all be out of the book of Acts. I'm going to take this for a minute, be okay? So the Acts 2 project that I put before you in January of 2021, you've heard of it, and so I keep it in front of you constantly. It starts with us being an Acts 1-8 church, as I've mentioned. That's our mission. God has called us to a mission, and every church should be here. It's either Matthew 28, it's Mark 16. This is where we have to be as a church. This is individual and personal. Every person's called to this. So when you look at Acts 1-8, you realize that the mission is necessary to fulfill our command. It's a command personally for you and for me that is not driven for the church yet. Though the church will be birthed out of it, remember, Jesus is speaking to that bunch and 120 in the upper room and the Holy Spirit fills. And then they are witnesses. They have the power. That's personal. But then, of course, again, the church is birthed. And that was what God had in store the whole time. But mission is necessary to fulfill our command. It's a command. That's an Acts 1-8 church. It then goes to vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I brought this again. We've always looked at the Acts 1-8 piece. But God just kind of added this Acts 2 project. We know what it says for vision. It's a project that's ongoing, continuing daily. Where? In the temple. We gather together. We know that we are the temple, but also the temple of people. Paul teaches it in chapter 3 and chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians. One is that personal temple. The other was the collective temple, spiritually speaking. Spiritually. And we have an assignment. We to do this in the temple and house to house. We're to gather for a purpose. 
praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily. So, vision is necessary to fulfill our continuance. Where do you get continuance? It's a noun coming off of continuing the verb, the continuance in the Acts 2 project. We need to finish. We need to get it done. That's vision. So mission, vision, here's our direction. I introduced this to you uh, a few months ago. Let me just hit it for a second. You'll see this more. The Acts 4 focus. It's our direction. We must have communion together. We must commune with the Lord and with one another. That's fellowship. It's very simple. To then do it for the gospel's sake. Consider what it says in Acts 4, 30, excuse me, 20, 32 and 33. That they were, first of all, of one heart and one soul. And then they had great power and great grace. They witnessed, of course, the resurrection. They're the apostles. Now we are the saints of the church. We didn't see the resurrection. Does anybody here saw the resurrection? Any of you there? But they tapped into the great power and the great grace of the resurrection. We have the gospel. We have the word of God. We have as much power as we would like to take advantage of in the spirit of God and the word of God. So that's our direction is necessary to fulfill our communion and the acts for focus. Direction. We have to have focus. And then lastly, our passion. The word passion means suffering. You hear me say it often. Acts 1-3 is the only place that it's found in your King Jimmy. And it talks of suffering. It's the Acts 13 advance. This is the collective, the church. This is what we're assigned to do. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and I mentioned this a few weeks ago, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. We know the passage for the work whereinto I have called now the church comes around and says, hey, we've seen that you ministered, you led, fasting, praying. Hey, we're going to lay hands on you and send you away. There'll be more to come in this. There'll be more to be said about what God is allowing your church to be part of in the next step in this area. It is the Acts 13 advance. Passion is necessary. That means suffering is necessary. <laughs> it's necessary. To fulfill our charge. What's our charge? It's the cargo that put on the boat. It's the charge that we have been given by God as a church in the Acts 13 advance. They moved it from a place of what Jerusalem was doing and stagnating to a place of Antioch in which they carried out everything that God wanted the church to do. And on and on and on it went. So our Acts 2 project in Christ alone, we covered Colossians chapter number 3. You heard from Dan Jellowick, a missionary who's part of that Acts 13 advance. And then, as your pastor, I bring you a little bit of a summarization of what we do on Sundays and a calendar of what's going to go on this year. And I say, this is how I desire for us to go about it in Christ alone. So here's our time of prayer for the next two or three minutes. I'd like all of you just to stand, please, if you wouldn't mind. We're to live faith and to love others. We're to declare hope. So I want you to bow your head for a word of prayer. I'm going to pray for a minute. Debbie's going to start playing a little bit of a song in the background. And I just want to ask you a question. Will you pray for our Acts 2 project every day, starting today, maybe right there in your chair with your spouse or by yourself, or coming up here? But I'm going to pray for a moment, and then I'm going to leave it to you for the next two or three minutes to pray over your church. This is your church, and Jesus Christ is the head of this church. Our Father in heaven, thank you for our time together You've profoundly spoken to us by your spirit, by your word, in the name of Jesus Christ. We extol the name of Jesus. Oh, we sung about your beautiful name today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being the author and finisher and being at the right hand of the Father, making intercession. You are the mediator between us 
and the Father. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray upon your church, upon your people, my brothers and sisters. And I pray for any of those that are not redeemed and not born again today as well, that you would stir in them that this life needs to be lived in Christ alone, and it's time to make a decision really soon. But I pray for my brothers and sisters, truly, God, that you will work in this time of prayer, that we will capture the essence of praying for each other and this church in the direction you've sent us to go. We want to fulfill your calling, your charge, in Jesus' name. Debbie, go ahead and play the music. You can respond right there. Or you can re-